Hello, my name is Jim Fuller. Uh, I'm a principal software engineer at Red Hat uh, on the product security engineering team. And today I'm going to be doing a presentation on curl end-to-end -end performance for curl up 2021. There's been a lot of previous work about um, characterizing uh, curl and loop curl's performance. Uh, unsurprisingly, Daniel Stenberg has a, a few uh, blog articles and in presentations and uh, in the recent past there's been an, uh, an enormous amount of work trying to characterize how HTTP 1.1 versus HTTP 2 versus HTTP 3. Uh, when I started this effort um, uh, in thinking about how to create a benchmark and what's the protocol matrix, I um, got a little distracted. So I didn't really have a good innate feeling about how curl performed in a local sense. In other words, what, what, what curl internals are doing, how it's doing it, how many times it's doing it, how much time is being spent. Um, it felt kind of like if I jumped to the end-to-end -end scenario with lots of load and, and maybe network degradation and, and all that type of stuff, I'd be missing um, uh, you know, some, some initial conditions. Um, so actually, I'm not going to do end-to-end -end performance. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we can profile uh, uh, curl as an application. Uh, some of the assumptions I'm going to make for this presentation is I'll test against the same thing, that is HTTP bin.org, a nice little test server. Um, I'm building curl from master, enabling debug so I can get at the symbols. And throughout the whole presentation, I'll, I'll show a few tools and techniques. Maybe some of you know, maybe some of you don't know, and I'll try to increase in complexity. Uh, uh, the goal is to, to to give some sort of intuition of how uh, uh, the internals work and its impact on uh, time and, and resource. All right, there's a few obvious things we can do to uh, uh, try and start learning how curl works internally. Um, one of them is uh, to use uh, uh, the curl config command. Let me just flip to Basically, um, if we give it configure flag, it'll tell us you know, how this uh, this version of curl was built. Obviously, we can always use curl b to emit a banner that tells us what protocols and what features are, are supported. Uh, alternately, um, uh, curl has now some very nice features for uh, emitting metrics about how it operated. So we're going to use the write out flag that'll write out a uh, uh, JSON document uh, uh, about how this transfer uh, uh, you know, proceeded. It changes for stuff like content type or uh, how long it took. Um, and that's useful. Uh, in, in curl, we have a few scripts, um, um, some uh, conventions like curl mem debug to help us sort of puzzle out what's happening. Uh, another approach to, uh, would be to use a, a bunch of uh, system tools uh, that you can use to profile you know, the operation of the system whilst curl is running. Um, and that's not really uh, uh, exactly what we want. We want to know when we run curl, just curl, how uh, what resources and where it spends its time and, and, and whatnot. As an initial attempt, uh, we could use something like uh, PIDSTAT. And what that's doing is running curl. It's, it's going to pass in uh, the process ID uh, to PIDSTAT, and then that should emit some information about how uh, uh, curl, what it's doing, uh, HTTP GET um, operates. And if you rerun this command over and over and over again, you'll get different values. And it's sort of hard to, to really uh, decipher. So let's get back to the presentation here. Uh, so that's when I start reaching into the toolbox uh, for other things. Uh, you may have heard of S-Trace. Uh, it's a useful utility that will enumerate all of the system calls your application is making. 
So in this instance, what we're going to do is apply the uh, dash C flag, which will have a nice tally of all the calls uh, 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 to system functions whilst we um, uh, uh, do uh, uh, an HTTP get. Uh, and I'm just going to not run this from the command line at the moment because there's some, some useful illustrations here with previous versions of curl that I had compiled. Uh, let's take a look here. So what we have is um, uh, uh, at the top is the you know the system calls that take up the most time, uh, and on the left hand side we have uh, uh, what percentage of time. Now when I'm presenting these numbers, uh, don't get caught up in the absolutes. And, and really, we're just you know doing one and get, so we're not talking about a lot of time here. Um, but the number of calls is interesting. Uh, and what pops out here for me uh, when I first ran this uh, was what is those errors doing with OpenApp? Um, I was a little bit confused uh, uh, why we're getting errors for that. So, you know, I, I zeroed in on that. Uh, with strace, you can supply a dash E flag to, um, to just list out um, the, the, the trace events for the open in OpenApp. And when I did that, I was like, aha, um, I was using a, a version of curl that I built um, I was referencing uh, uh, HTTP3 library quiche, and actually I hadn't built that. So I was looking for it, and obviously there was an error, so useful. Um, let's try uh, another uh, uh, S-trace. Uh, now we're going to um, do a post. Uh, and once again, I'm using HTTP bin.org slash post, which will just uh, replay back what you posted it. Uh, and uh, we can see once again, um, uh, the, where it spent its time. Now you can see the right uh, system call. Uh, uh, and uh, this starts giving me a sense of what the application is doing, what uh, system calls it's making, and where it's spending its time. Uh, we can uh, use S-Trace uh, on a whole bunch of things. Uh, the, the example uh, programs that uh, curl um, has in its uh, repo are a useful uh, 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 thing to test on. For example, the uh, HTTP put, you can go and compile, and then um, uh, we can go and see what its performance is, uh, just to give a little bit of variation. Uh, for example, uh, why is this, uh, uh, because we're doing a put now, why are we uh, uh, spending most of our time in wait for? Now, all of these are interesting questions and, and start giving us some um, hints about uh, how things work. And, and similarly, I ran the 10 at a time uh, code example, uh, which is a bit more media, because it's obviously calling a bunch of um, uh, sites and pulling things down. And uh, We now have uh, 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 some interesting things come out of that where we have a number of errors, and presumably that will be, you know, we're connecting to things and problems with websites or reconnections and all, and all that type of stuff. All very interesting. Uh, but looking at system calls is sort of uh, uh, indirect. In other words, it's, it's giving me um, uh, information about how the application is running, but it's not telling me what, you know, what functions are being specifically called within curl itself. And this is where Ltrace uh, comes in. Ltrace has a similar sort of interface as strace. In fact, they, they pretty much will share most of the same uh, flags. And as you can see here, we have, uh, we're have we going to do the same uh, um, uh, call that we did with S-Trace, uh, but we're just going to use L-Trace. And the result of this is um, uh, a list of the functions, the curl functions that were called. Um, so I find this interesting. Uh, well, not, not very surprising, uh, you know, that we've spent a lot of time uh, doing uh, StirCamp or, or curl string equal. Um, uh, I'm not saying that um, uh, the implementation isn't optimal, um, but maybe um, any kind of work uh, done to optimize that particular part of the code uh, might result in um, uh, 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 better performance. Not really. If you take a look at the percentage of time or the number of seconds, uh, this is just one put in. And really, we'd have to do a lot of these things to um, sort of average out um, and get some better signal about things.
Uh, let's do a post now. Uh, uh, not much difference. Um, and then once again, we'll do L trace now with the uh, 10 at a time. And that's where we see the multi uh, form uh, show up. Uh, and you, you start getting a sense of uh, where we spend time and, and all that type of stuff. All right, so uh, that's L trace. Uh, so never um, satisfied with uh, uh, any one tool, uh, we move on to another tool, which I, I reach out for uh, uh, quite often, uh, which is a thing called memory uh, pro profile. It's just a Python library that, um, that attempts to uh, uh, plot the, the memory usage of the application. Uh, you can install it using pip. Um, there might be some dependencies for your own platform, I don't know. Um, uh, and you run it uh, with mproc run curl, and then you know the, the command that you do that you want, and I'll generate a sort of database, and then you can uh, derive a plot from that. Um, so if we run um, a curl command, just doing a simple get, we see um, uh, that we um, start off uh, somewhere at six point seven five, and then we end up at eight point five uh, megabytes of uh, memory used. Um, okay, so once we, we we have a tool that allows us to do uh, memory profiling, let's let's scale it up. Let's start doing a, a bunch of calls. And I'm just doing a simple trick here um, using expansion. With uh, you know, I'm able to hit HTTP bin anything one, anything two, uh, and see how that runs. And it, it kind of. Um, uh, uh, shows me that uh, uh, curl is being efficient, uh, and, and that's probably reusing connections. And, uh, and then when I go up to 100, um, actually things broke, and which is kind of common with a lot of tools, is that there'll be a problem, it might be my configuration. Um, uh, and it's not that I, uh, I'm not curious, but I am lazy, because I know of other tools. Um, and uh, uh, PS Record is one of them, which I, I use because uh, I, I don't just want to know about memory, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and what this uh, gives us is a view in our CPU and, and we can plot it uh, as well. Um, so when we run this uh, uh, with a similar uh, 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 curl command as we did before, um, uh, uh, we get a plot that shows us uh, uh, not only the amount of memory used, uh, but when the CPU is being Cool. Uh, for fun, uh, it's I decided to compile Tiny Curl to see if there was any difference, and there is. So if we flip back to um, uh, normal curl, we see it starts off with uh, uh, around 6.75 uh, uh, megabytes of real memory, whereas uh, Tiny Curl, unsurprisingly, um, starts off with a, uh, quite a bit less, and also doesn't spike as hard on the CPU. Um, so good work, Daniel. Um, Creating something that's indeed uh, less resource intensive. So, <clears throat> not satisfied once again with just doing single calls, we are going to uh, now scale up. So, if I run the 10 at a time example, um, I can start seeing how the CPU is, is spiking on each of the calls, uh, and we can now see a sort of uh, some sort of gradient and then some plateau of memory usage. Telling us that curl is being efficient. Uh, let's uh, let's do more. Um, well, I use the same expansion trick of one to ten here, so that's a little bit less. But if I, I scale it out, I uh, use a hundred, or I use a uh, thousand, I start seeing a pattern, uh, a nice linear pattern, which kind of gives a hint that um, uh, maybe curl is doing the right thing here. So that's great. Um, I can't really, I don't really have a sense of. Um, you know, what the real memory usage, you know, why is this 30 megs versus uh, why this is uh, 11 megs max and, you know, th there'll be a reason why and, uh, uh, but this is giving me a sense of, of how the application works with more um, uh, load, more activity. Right, and then we have uh, the ancient and wonderful Valgrind, which we use, uh, uh, you know, more familiar sense, we can find memory leaks with it. Uh, uh, but uh, 
maybe uh, uh, you've not used uh, uh, the call grind tool that you can use in Dial Grind, uh, which will uh, give us some insight into uh, uh, how, it, how it operates. I'm not going to drill down too much into this um, because uh, uh, there are a lot of um, configuration options with, with, uh, with this. And, um, It'll depend on your platform, and et cetera, et cetera. But I'd love to hear um, other people's uh, use of Valgrind with the call grind to, to um, uh, characterize performance. All right. So this leads us on to um, using uh, the, the sort of uh, uh, heavy duty uh, uh, performance sort of profilers in the industry. And GProc was a, you know, the one that's uh, well known and, and still used, but it's ancient. And the, the sort of um, uh, spiritual uh, uh, progeny of uh, GProc is uh, Linux Perk, uh, which is easy to install, easy to use, and, uh, and it presents a, an enormous amount of data uh, for you to get a sense of how the, an application is running. Um, so here what we're doing is uh, uh, we're gonna do a Perk record, uh, just a simple um, get. And uh, with, with no sort of uh, other flags, we're just presented with uh, quite a bit of information here, um, uh, which gives us, uh, 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 in its default uh, mode, uh, a presentation of uh, how much time, uh, how much CPU clock is being used for any um, uh, particular uh, object and symbol. And you can drill down into these things. Um, uh, don't worry too much about the greens and the reds. Those are sort of, you can default when something goes green or red. So uh, uh, the, the, it's just another view on all the information that's um, uh, coming off uh, uh, your application. Uh, I find it more useful to use perf using the call graph. Um, if you uh, see there's the dash dash call graph, um, we can use the dwarf format. And why? Because uh, when you generate a report this way, uh, what you get is a <clears throat> nice um, uh, way to break down where, um, where CPU clock is being used. So if we look here, we start off at, at main and then we drill down main, <clears throat> run uh, all transfers all the way down to um, uh, kernel multi-perform, um, multi-run single. And we see we're spending most of the time um, uh, Doing the protocol connect, so that's really wow. That that that's almost instant uh, knowledge there. Uh, that would have taken a lot of time, a lot of reading code, a lot of parsing, sort of mentally, a lot of things. Um, and and perk isn't just about CPU clock. Um, you can do a. Uh, in fact, let me just see if we can do pseudo pseudo perk lists. For your um, for your architecture platform, uh, uh, pseudo perf list will list out all of the um, um, events that you can track and and, and uh, present. Um, so it, it's not just about CPU clock, and in fact, um, you can spend well a lot of time here uh, trying to understand uh, how things. Now all these tools are, you know, there's a universe of, of sort of observability tools and uh, there's a gentleman named Brendan Gregg who I would absolutely recommend going to his website. You'll see it there um, uh, annotated in the uh, bottom right hand corner of this picture. Uh, and all these tools um, uh, kind of are, you know, useful to use once or learn about um, uh, to help characterize uh, uh, application profile. So that's really kind of you know my uh, satisfying my own curiosity. I now have a, a bunch of tools I can sit there and play with and use different pro builds, uh, different protocols. I can I can I can now scale up uh, my tests and, and and perform load or do serial calls or in parallel calls and now degrade networks. Um, there's some uh, questions that uh, I probably want to ask myself. You know what code paths are using a lot of CPU. Um, cache misses, uh, which code paths are allocating memory, um, you know, what, where are we getting uh, retransmits, all this sort of next steps uh, questions. 
So I've now presented a, a, a few tools. Some, some of them, maybe some people know all these and uh, you know, are experts at them. At them. I, I'm not. Um, but I thought I'd present a few handy tools uh, that we can use on curl to uh, protofile. Uh, so I'd love to hear uh, what tools you use, and uh, maybe at curl up, um, you can you know before curl up, you can try a few of these on your builds, and uh, and talk about. Uh, uh, what parts of the code base uh, we could target for optimization. Uh, thank you very much and uh, look forward to talking again.